Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Well, welcome to Hotline. Now, do you feel like a victim? Do you know that you can be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus? We're going to talk about that this afternoon. Well, greetings, everyone. Welcome to Hotline Ministry. Uh, today, we're going to be finishing up our study in the wonderful book of Esther. Mm -hmm. And it, it all leads in chapter 8, chapter 9, and, of course, 10. We find that, you know, even though the Jews were victims, mm -hmm. they now are being shown and seen as victors. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many today in our, in our world, in our society, Tim, that that feel like they're victims and sense mm -hmm. they're victims, and maybe in some cases they are, but God can lift you out of that and make you a victor. Mm -hmm. And that is what I find the end of this wonderful book is all about, mm -hmm. going from victim to victor. And certainly, you know, in our ministry, we try to share with the people that, hey, you know, Yes, we have become victims of certain things, but God has made us more than conquerors mm -hmm. through Christ that strengthens us. And, That's it. and I, I see that so vivid in chapter 8, which we covered last week, chapters 9 and 10 that we're going to cover this week, how mm -hmm. they became such great victors yeah. in this. So, you know, just a little summation of the whole book mm -hmm. you know chapter one we get you know uh, there's a big feast and and the queen refuses to present herself before everybody who's at the feast so therefore the king now deposes her or or makes it so she is no longer queen mm -hmm. so th then they have a great war a great battle about four years mm -hmm. it lasted and the king comes back with his tail between his legs because he had been beat badly, mm -hmm. asking about Queen Vasti, and then they suggest, oh, you got rid of her. Now you need to have a beauty contest, for lack of better words. And this is where Esther comes in. Mm -hmm. And she, she is presented in this, con this contest, and she wins it hands down. Mm -hmm. From there, we have this fellow by the name of Haman who rises up in the ranks while he's an Agagite, which means that he hates the Jews. Mm -hmm. He has a terrible, um, just, just an awful hatred for the Jews because the Jews were supposed to have gotten rid of the Agagites, conquered them, but they didn't, mm -hmm. so left some around. Yep. So now they're coming back to haunt them. You have Mordecai, who also is rising up in the ranks, mm -hmm. who happens to be Esther's uh, uncle, mm -hmm. which in essence became a father because he took her in because her parents were killed. So now you have Queen Esther doing this. So, so you have all of that. Haman finds out that Mordecai was a Jew. Mm -hmm. Well, he hated Mordecai anyway because Mordecai would not bow to Haman. Mm -hmm. But then he finds out that, that Mordecai is a Jew, so Haman writes a decree mm -hmm. under the authority of the king. Yep. The king is oblivious of everything, it seems like to me. So mm -hmm. gives him just a clean slate, do whatever you want to do, 
write whatever you want to write. I'll okay it. You know, I'll you can just mm -hmm. here's my stamp. It's okay. Yeah. And bang. So he writes a decree that on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month of Ada, you can go and kill the Jews. Mm -hmm. That's presented. Mordecai goes to Queen Esther, asks her to go before the king to do something to change this decree. Queen Esther goes in fear and trepidation because she had not been asked to enter right. by the king. So she, at, she prays, and, and, and of course at this time Mordecai is in, in ashes and fasting and prayer and all of that. Mm -hmm. Esther agrees to do the same with her handmaidens, mm -hmm. and she fully expects, I think, to possibly lose her life mm -hmm. for going before the king without permission. But instead, he grants her a favor and says, whatever you want, up to half the kingdom. Mm -hmm. She tells what the decree is all about. The king says, you can't do away with the decree because that's final, but you can write something that would kind of, um, what's the word I want? Kind of offset nullify. this, nullify yep. this decree. And what they write is that give the Jews the right to defend themselves. Hmm. The king says, here's my ring. You write it up and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So Mordecai does. Now the day comes where it is the twelfth month, the thirteenth day, and people rise up against the Jews. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much where we're at at this yeah. point. So you know, in all of that, you look at it, you say, "Wow!" I mean, this is kind of kind of edges on me how deep hatred can be in the mm -hmm. lives of some people. Yeah. You know, where even though they know now that the, that the deck has been stacked against them, mm -hmm. the enemies of the Jews, but because of their deep hatred, they didn't care mm -hmm. that the Jews could defend themselves, that the Jews could in fact slay their enemies who come up against them. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any fear about that. At least it didn't seem they didn't seem to care because they rose up against the Jews mm -hmm. in all the provinces. Yeah, but there were some I, we, we do know from the previous chapter that there were a number of the kingdom that, in fear of the Jews, became Jews themselves. Right. But yeah, there was definitely this other group. There, there was a sizable group within that kingdom that said, "We don't care." You're going down. Yeah, and uh, and part of that's probably because not, you know you didn't only have Haman. But you had all of his sons that held some pretty high positions as well, as you could imagine, just yep. knowing Haman's ego in and of himself. You can be sure that his sons were also pretty high up, and they would have carried the same belief systems mm -hmm. as their father. And so you have not just one man, but you really have 11 right. that are really helping to keep the... <laughs> keep fanning into flame this hatred yep. that had existed. Yeah, so keep this fire burning. And, and now, you know, as we enter into chapter 9, and I'm going to have Tim read that in just a moment, um, but, you know, that this now has become red hot, mm -hmm. you know, where it's, it's boiling over, and it's the day that, they had been, that the enemy of the Jews had been looking for mm -hmm. because it had been tacked on the walls, and they were looking for this. They, 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 had, they were bloodthirsty, mm -hmm. and we can't wait. Right. However, now the Jews are on defense because they have been given permission to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. That's where we find ourselves in chapter 9 and 10. So we're going to finish those two chapters today. But let's ask the Lord to be with us as we look at these chapters after, as we discuss some things, and, and certainly there are going to be some questions that even Pastor Tim and I have that, you know, why did they do this? Why did they have to do this? Why was it important that they did this? Um, you know, that we're going to find in chapter 9. You know, Haman's sons were already dead. Haman was dead, but now they're going to hang him. Why did that have to happen? 
and hopefully we can come up with some answers, or at least some reasonable explanations as to why this, this mm -hmm. all had to happen. But let's ask the Lord to be with us as we wrap up this very impo important drama, if you will, in the lives of the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. or the Jews in particular. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful little book that you've given us. Father, we ask now that you would help us to, to see it in its fullness as we conclude this book. So, Father, be with Pastor Golden and myself as we, as we talk about this. Be with each one who watches and who listens. That, Father God, you would just open up our minds and open up our, our hearts to receive uh, your goodness, your protection, your guidance in our lives. So, Father, we thank you so much. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Golden is going to read chapter 9 and also 10. So now in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai became increasingly prominent. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. Also, Parshandatha, Delphon, Espatha, Paratha, Adalia, Eridatha, Parmashta, Arisei, Aridei, and Bajazatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews they killed, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. On that day, the number of those who killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king, and the king said to Queen Esther, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel, and the 10 sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. The Nestor said, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree. And let Haman's 10 sons be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the fourteenth day of the month of Adar and killed three hundred men at Shushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed seventy-five thousand of their enemies, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th, and on the 15th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of, village, of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled town celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar, with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th day of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, 
and did cast pur, that is the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on its own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. So they called these days Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them, that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year according to the written instructions and according to the prescribed time, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, that these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews and that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, with Mordecai the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them and as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. And King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of his power and his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, and are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus, and was great among the Jews, and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. Well, what a, what a tremendous now closing, I think, to this drama that we have. And, and I don't know, I just, just a couple of things as you were reading, Tim, that, that just jumped out to me. And um, this was a day that, that First of all, the enemy of the Jews were looking forward to. Mm -hmm. You know, their hands were tied until this 13th day of the 12th month, yeah. um, where now they can go and freely attack the Jews. Mm -hmm. And especially the Agagites amongst them, because yeah. this is something they hadn't just been waiting for during their lifetime. They've been waiting for decades and years almost beyond number, you know, yep. from so long ago when, as you said before, that the Jews were supposed to wipe them out according to God's command, but they, in deception, came and they made a deal mm -hmm. with them and said, we'd, we'd be willing to be your slaves just so they wouldn't get slaughtered because they knew that they would be slaughtered because right. of the favor that they had seen that Israel had received with God no matter where they went. And so... Israel had mercy in a place where maybe they shouldn't have had mercy right. and said, okay, fine, so be it. Because had they done what they were originally commanded by God to do, Haman wouldn't have been here at this yeah, point. This never would have happened. And it would all, all been, I said, non-existent. But again, it just shows you how we reap the consequences of what it is where, where we have been. And, but yet God hadn't forgotten them. And God, still in the midst of this, would have had every right to say, well, you know, you're on your own. You, you created your bed, lie in it, you know. Yep. But he didn't. God showed them the way out, and he provided a means for escape in all of this, which was amazing. Yeah, you know, and, and I, what I find amazing is that Mordecai, in particular, was so ingenious in knowing how to overturn mm. the decree of of Haman mm -hmm. by writing just a, a very simple paragraph that the Jews can take defense for themselves, mm -hmm. which before they were not able to. Right. So just by writing that the Jews can now defend themselves mm -hmm. was a stroke of genius, mm -hmm. in my view, on the part yep. of Mordecai. You know, I mean, he could have read the decree that Haman said and said, look, this is complete. How do I combat this? There's no way I can combat this. But Mordecai, I was able mm -hmm. to say, wait a minute. There's one way we can. Let the Jews defend 
themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and this is exactly what what all of this chapter is about. And so so I just I just find it amazing how there's no indication here at all, which leads me to believe that no one no one was killed on this Jewish side. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't say that seventy five thousand Agagites were killed yet. 1,500 Jews. No, it doesn't say that. All it tells is those who were the mm -hmm. enemy of the Jews, how many of them were killed. It does not mention mm -hmm. that any Jew lost their life. Mm -hmm. I find that phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know. But once again, under the mighty protective hand of God, why would I find that amazing? Mm -hmm. Because God can do that. Yep. That's because that's who he is. Yeah. Well, and not only could you do that, I mean, we read so many different accounts throughout all the Old Testament of, uh, you know, even that one war where they were having to march on the enemy, and God said, go forward, but I'm going to do battle for you. Yeah. And, and they go forward, and by the time they get to the front lines, they basically sit back and they watch the other army annihilate themselves. Right, yeah, go against each other. You know, and so, again, th it's not out of the question to say that, yeah, no one had probably died here because God had done this before, over and over and over again for them. Yeah, so I mean, it's just, to me, it's just uh, uh, an amazing account. And, and once again, I call this an account, Tim, not because it's more than a story. Mm -hmm. This is something that actually happened. That's right. All right, so this is a historical account of something that took place. Mm -hmm. This is not just you know, Mordecai or someone, you know, taking liberty and mm -hmm. saying, let me write a nice little fairy tale. Yeah. No, that, that is not what this is. Right. This is an account of an actual historical event that took place. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, I just want us to, to remember that. This is not just some story that somebody's mm -hmm. telling. Which is a way that a lot of people like to read the Bible in general. Well, that's mm -hmm. a good fairy tale. No. Right. Yeah, please don't ever do that because this is, you know, this is real. Mm -hmm. And what God wrote to us is historically proven mm -hmm. and it's real. In fact, one of the notes that I took uh, concerning this is the Jews still today celebrate the Feast of Purim. Mm -hmm. They remember back when this occurred and they are still celebrating it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something that they making up. Yeah. This is and this isn't something, and though the Bible saying it should be enough, yeah. and it is enough, Right. but they even highlighted in this passage that this is written in the Chronicles of Persia. Right. You know, so this is, you know, there's extra biblical um, evidence right. uh, and documentation to also support what we see here. And in fact, if you want to go back a few chapters, Remember, the king was sleeping, or couldn't sleep one night, mm -hmm. so he asked for the book of Chronicles, which he just so happened, by coincidence, right, to turn to Mordecai, devising or, or, or looking, seeing a plot to kill the king, mm -hmm. telling the king, and the king saying, have I ever paid him for this? Mm -hmm. Have I ever rewarded him for this? No, you have not, king. Uh -huh. And then, of course, then we have the humiliation, in my view, the humiliation of Haman yep. having to lead Mordecai through the cities, mm -hmm. dressed up in all the regalia and all the pomp and circumstance of being the head mm -hmm. and his Haman leading Mordecai's horse through the Especially cities. Especially when Haman was the one who was... Um, had actually stated how this was to happen, yeah. thinking it was going to happen for him. Right. And then to get the slap in the face, finding out, well, no, actually, it's going to be for Mordecai. It's going to be, and, I, it's going to be for your enemy, yeah. the one that you want to kill. I mean, I mean, I just, yeah, all through it, though, I just see wonderful how God is there, seated on his throne, mm -hmm. and I can't help but think that every once in a while, God just gets a little chuckle saying, there, mm -hmm. you know, take that, you know, yeah. like with Haman, there. You know, I, I'm going to reverse the mm -hmm. whole thing so that what you wanted is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. When we're willing to do what God wants and live the way God wants us to live, he backs us up. 
Yeah. You know, and you know, a great picture I see of that is in the newest New Testament, right? With uh, this, with Stephen. Yep. And you know, here's Stephen giving a great message, but getting stoned to death for his willingness to take a stand for Jesus Christ. And what it tells us at the end of that is that when, the, the, as just as he's getting close to that point of death, he sa says he saw heaven open. And he saw, and, I, and this is the incredible piece, he saw Jesus standing right. at the right hand of God. Every other time in Scripture, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. But here, Jesus is standing. Right. And so he's just saying, you know, you stood up for me. Yeah. I'm going to stand up for yeah. you. And, you know, and he is, even in the midst of that, even though Stephen still had to be stoned, God was behind right. him in this, and, and God supported him. And in, in the case with Mordecai, we see kind of the reverse, because we see a, a full vindication. We see a full exoneration take place. And my mind goes back to that wonderful scripture verse, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, yep. and he will lift you up. Yep. But you got to humble yourself before him first. And, and Mordecai, I did that. Esther did that. Right. You know, the Jewish people as a whole did that because when they were asked to fast and pray for the situation, they did so. Um, and, and in that concept of fasting and prayer also came an understanding that repentance has to precede it. Yep. And so all that is taking place, and, and God took honor in that, and, and he came through. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that that is the key to the whole thing. And, you know, just looking at the world in general and our nation, um, you know, we, we, we wonder when God's going to bless us again. Well, my view is he's not going to bless us again until we come to the point of repentance mm -hmm. for our sin because of, you know, all that, all that we've done contrary to him. Mm -hmm. And we saw the repentance of the Jews. We mm -hmm. saw them wailing and fasting and weeping and and doing those things of mm -hmm. total um letting loose of yes. this is who you know i bound before god mm -hmm. and 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 that's one of the things that i find interesting in this chapter nine is how mordecai now has become exalted or he has become lifted up high mm -hmm. you know here's this guy who at one time was you know fairly low on the totem pole and now he's being raised up to be second to the, to the king, mm -hmm. you know, and he gets the land of Haman and the palace of Haman and everything. Kind of sounds like another guy. His name was Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, look what happened to Joseph, right? I mean, here they have his brothers go against him. Then they throw him in a ditch. Then they sell him to, as a slave to the Egyptians. And what, you know, then you read in the chapter, Joseph is on the throne and his brothers have to come and humble themselves and mm -hmm. beg for food as he was also placed second in command only to Pharaoh. Yeah. You know? And again, not just a Bible story, though we've all seen the, the movies, we all heard yep. about it in Sunday school, documented historical accounts, both biblically and extra-biblically. Right, and so, I mean, this is, to me, this is just so wild. I love this. So in verse 1 of chapter 9, the day has arrived. Mm -hmm. The enemy, and, and it even says that, where, you know, he had decreed, drew near to put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jew hoped to have power over them, over mm -hmm. the Jews, right? Though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. But that is in parentheses. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like an added thing for us to say, however, don't, don't forget that the king gave Mordecai the ring to write a decree that would offset the decree mm -hmm. of Haman. And, and, but, you know, so it's just kind of, you know, God or the, the, the church fathers, you know, writing this and saying, don't forget this part of the story because you, gotta, you, you need to know that. But, the, but, of course, the enemy was, you know, they were chomping at the bit. Ah, finally, the day has arrived for mm -hmm. vindication. You know, and they were chomping at the bit. However, guess what? God now had overruled and given the Jews authority mm -hmm. to defend themselves. Before, remember, the Jews were slaves. Mm -hmm. So they had nothing to defend themselves with. They had no rights to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Now this decree gives them the authority to defend themselves and the authority to take up arms, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, to 
you know, make sure that, that, that their, their, good, their lives are going to be spared. Mm -hmm. so, so we have that. So now the Jews gather themselves together in their city. So, so, so they weren't just staying within their own little confines or their own little huts or whatever. Right. They gathered together as a group. Yeah, there was an assembly, uh, like a, a, a strategic assembly right. of an army. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I mean, and, and they did this in all of the cities, throughout mm -hmm. all of the provinces. All right, so it wasn't just in Shushan, but it was in a, it was what, 127 provinces? 127. And, you know, and, and to do this. So they all gather. You know what I find, Tim, and you mentioned this earlier to me, you know, how strategically the Jews had planned this or gotten this all together, and they were in such unity. Mm -hmm. They were in such oneness. Yep. That in all the provinces they did this. Mm -hmm. In all the provinces they they took up the same the same strategic um, positions, mm -hmm. you know. And remember now, this is this is like what the third, almost a fourth month into this that the decree now has been overturned. Mm -hmm. So they only had like seven months to do all this, but they did it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I just find that wonderful that the Jews gathered themselves in, in their cities. That means all the cities throughout mm -hmm. all the provinces to lay hand on such a thought, their hurt. So they didn't go out just to, an, to annihilate. They did not mm -hmm. go out to wipe out right. their enemies. They were simply doing defense. They were not doing offense. Right, right. So they waited for their enemy to come to them. Mm-hmm. And if their enemy did not come to them, guess what? Their lives would have been spared. Mm -hmm. But they have all the, the enemies here. And, and we're finding that, that if we go down further in this chapter, that in all, about 75,000 rose up against the Jews mm -hmm. on that day. I find that amazing. You know, that, that you know, they did not care for their lives at all. They thought that they were going to be the victors. Mm -hmm even though God had overruled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how many people today are thinking the same thing? Mm -hmm. I can be the victor, and I don't have to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. When, in fact, God is saying, you follow my way, and you will be the victor. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so I see right. that through all of this. So you have these 75,000 people who didn't really care about their own lives. Mm -hmm. And... Is it because their hatred was so strong mm -hmm. that it ate, just ate them up? Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that in, in a lot of, of our culture today mm -hmm. where hatred is just so boiled over mm -hmm. that no matter what, they're, they're willing to face the consequences. Right. And the truth of the matter is there's probably a lot more than 75,000. Yeah. There's 75,000 that we know of that perished right. that day. My deduction is that there's probably a lot more than that that rose up. But there was a bunch that fled. Yeah. When they realized, we we do, we're done for. We we can't succeed here. You know, because whenever you have a revolt, there is always going to be a fall a falling away of of some in in the process. And so I think that part of it's the hatred. I think that's why the biggest piece of it. I think the other piece though is just hu the human nature that when someone takes the lead. There's a lot of people that just fall into it. Yep. You know, you look, you're, you're barking the loudest. It's like a bunch of dogs, you know, and I don't mean that in a condescending way, but people are sometimes. If one dog starts barking at a cat and he can get another dog barking, you know, and get those dogs barking, they'll get more dogs barking, you know, but one takes the lead. You know, and it's the same thing with people. And you find this throughout, no, no matter what's going on. You see this um, whenever there's a crisis. Uh, you know, I think about the, the theater that had um, burnt to the ground back about five years or so ago. And it says that uh, the, and of hundreds, over 100 people perished in that fire because they were all going for one exit. Yep. There was eight exits out of that building. They were all going for one. Why? Because the person that took the lead went for the one and a lot of them just fell into play and just followed and they're like had they gone through any of the other exits they would have been a-okay yep yep and so it's in that but it's also in dealing with war you know we see it also even for with christ right when um he is getting ready to be turned over to be crucified and you know Pilate looks at the people and says okay i can either give you jesus 
who, in whom I find no fault, or I can give you Barabbas, who's got this line of offenses. And it says the crowd, all of them, began just shout, give us Barabbas. Now think of the reality of that. What's the chances of everybody agreeing in one place like that in the crowd? Not very, but there's a lot of people that just follow. Ooh, this is where everybody else is going, you know, so I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. I'm going to do it too. You know, we're going to have a posse going here. We're going to have a witch hunt, whichever the case is, you know. Yep. It's that same principle that you see being played out. And that's, I believe you had a lot of that happening here. Yeah. So the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Mm -hmm. And you get one person saying, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you get the whole crowd saying, crucify him. Yep. You know, or you get one person saying, kill the Jews. And now you got thousands mm -hmm. that are gathered following that or echoing that cry mm -hmm. and and that's what we see here yeah but you know what i find interesting in, in verses two and three is that you know and no man could withstand them for the fear of them fell upon all people mm -hmm. so even though they knew that they didn't have a ghost of a chance they still went for it mm -hmm. which really i find amazing yeah you know and then you have even in verse 3 at the end, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. So now it wasn't just a fear of all the Jews fell upon them, but the fear, look, look at Mordecai. Look at, look at how he's been raised up. Look at how he has, and now he's become second to the king. And look at what's happened. And his niece is now the queen, you know, and, and all of this. Mm -hmm. and, and they're looking at that, and... But I look at the word fear as not in, in trembling, but in honor. Mm -hmm. You know, when it talks to us about fearing the Lord, what is he mm -hmm. saying? Honor him, you know? And, and you brought up the, the point about Jesus rising up off his throne and, and having Stephen come up into heaven. Mm -hmm. What was Jesus doing? It's the same thing in the courtroom. Judge walks in, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You all stand, oh, you know? Or you go to salute the flag, what do they tell you? all stand, take off your hats. It's honor. Mm -hmm. It's all about honor. And these people were honoring them now, you know, mm -hmm. but there were some who refused. And those some who refused, there were a great number of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I look at 100,000 people and say, that's a pretty good number. Yeah. Right. But, you know, they, they would not do that. Mm -hmm. They just wouldn't do it. So we, we find that. So because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them, Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater. It seems mm -hmm. like every day there were new stories about him. There were new accounts about him, you know, how he was rising mm -hmm. up almost from obscurity to now becoming second in command. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he could do no wrong, so, you know, so to speak, yep. to say even in the king's eyes. So now you have in verse 5, the Jews smote all their enemies with a stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto all those that hated them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God gave them permission to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to defend themselves. If they didn't, they would have all died. Mm -hmm. So God just said, defend yourself. I find amazing here is where Haman, in his decree, wrote to the enemies of the Jews and say, not only slay the Jews, but now you can take all of their plunder. Mm -hmm. Mordecai writes, you can now defend yourself against your enemies, but don't take the plunder. Mm -hmm. Because nowhere in chapter 9 did anybody touch the plunder. That's nobody right. touched the spoils. Mm -hmm. You know, all they wanted to do was defend themselves. That was it. Mm -hmm. And what great honor. You know, I mean. So what a great sign of, what, of their character. Yeah. You know, to me, it's just great, great character of, mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. You know. And, and, and what a difference, too, in just what you see in, in, as you look at this and, and kind of reading a little bit between the lines here of the difference of the heart of the two warring factions here. Because on the one side, you've got a people, as you said, the Jews, who are going to defend themselves but I'm not going to take your stuff. You know, I'm going to defend my life, but I'm not, it's not about destroying you. It's about protecting me. Right. You know, where you've got the other side of the spectrum, which as you said, kill them, take the plunder, whatever you want. 
But then you see all this other stuff as well of the heart attitude of those people. Because as it says there, it's not just now the Jews that they're going against. It tells us that all the officials, all the satraps, all the governors, all those that were involved doing the king's work. So basically the entire governmental structure was behind the Jews. Yep. And we're backing the Jews. But yet this group of people, this motley crew of, you know, even though a large number, kind of not really all that large when you stop thinking it's from 127 provinces here, you know, are rising up now not against just the Jews. We're rising up against our government as well. And, and we're, we, are, we don't care if the government stands with them. Our hatred is so firm. We don't care about the Jews. And we, by the way, King, we don't care about you either. Yep. You know, I mean, certainly today, and, and I'm just going to make a statement and we can talk about, it. you know, we talk about, you know, the, the terrible disease of cancer and mm -hmm. the, so many diseases of cancer. But I think that there is a greater disease in our, in our world mm -hmm. and in our culture, and that is the disease of hatred. Mm -hmm. Because what is fueling the fire? Mm -hmm. For these people who don't have a ghost of a chance, right. yet they took the chance to try to destroy the Jews, was, in all intents and purposes, simply because of hatred. Mm -hmm. You know, what a terrible cancer hatred right. is in the hearts and minds of people. Mm -hmm. And we get it today in our world, we get it yeah. today in our country. You know, our country is so divided Mm -hmm. And the hatred is, is really strong. And it's, it's a terrible, terrible cancer mm -hmm. that is eating yeah. at so many people. And it's totally and, irrational. Yeah. You know, it, it, it causes you to make decisions that are just, make no sense to, in, in the normal sit situation. And we will continue to do that until you choose to lay, lay aside the hate. Yeah. Until you choose to lay aside the bitterness. And you got to do that. So now we go through, and we're not going to, you know, verses 6 through, you know, Tim did a great job naming all the names. And, and oh, so come on, you're not going to try? No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, 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 you did it once. So then you have the ten sons of Haman, you know, the enemies of the Jew, slay, slew they, but on the spoil laid they not their hands. So they, they also slew the sons of Haman, who you have to conclude were very, very wealthy people. Because mm -hmm. Haman was a very, very wealthy man. Yeah. And, you know, so they had not, now, now the ten sons of Haman are dead. Mm -hmm. All right? We got that, verse 10. Yeah. And on the day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan and the palace were brought before the king. And the king said to Esther, the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the palace. And the ten sons of Haman, what have. Uh, they done in the rest of the king's provinces. So he's saying, what's the rest of the battle? What's the rest of the numbers? And they've given the numbers, which end up being about 75,000. And it shall be granted you, you know, the request that you have. And the request now is this, take Haman and his sons and hang them. Mm -hmm. Now, they're already dead. Mm -hmm. So in my reading, you know, I look at it and say, you know, some people are looking at it and they're really questioning, okay, is this showing a great hatred that Esther had for the people? Hmm. Is that what it's showing? Or is it showing something else? I prefer to think it's showing something else. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the big things that it's showing here is, again, what we've kind of already stated, but again, to put it in context of this specific situation, the ten sons are now dead. Why are they dead? Yep. It's not because the Jews sought them out to kill them. The Jews simply defended themselves. So what this is telling us is that these ton sons of Haman were at least involved, every one of them, in this revolt. Right. If not possibly leading the revolt. I was going to say, they might have been generals. You know, and so... And I would be more inclined to think that's the case, because if Haman was in the level being second basically only to the king, you can be sure these sons had high levels of position. And so they were actively involved in this onslaught towards the Jews, you know, and, and coming against them. And so they have now been killed. And so my sense is, is that 
this public hanging now is, even though, yes, they are already dead, is to make sure that is understood because hanging is something that was a sign of treason mm-hmm. you know, upon a kingdom. And so it, it was a criminal um, sentence. It's not just like everybody else. You didn't want to be grouped with just everybody else, right. the other 75,000. These guys had to be re- receive the punishment that was just due. And that required people in the country to see that these men of prominence have committed criminal acts that needed to be punished. You know, and, and I love your explanation. I, I, I look at verse 25, for example, and it says, should return upon his own head that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. I'm looking at this not as vengeance by Esther mm-hmm. or by Mordecai. I, I, I do not see that. Basically, the way I'm looking at this is hang these 11 to show the enemies. If you rise up against us, you too will die. Mm-hmm. So see this as a, as a picture of you can protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Go home, do your farming, whatever it is you're doing, and just leave us alone. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's almost like a warning to everybody. You know, look. All we want is to live in peace. Leave us alone. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're going to end up like this. Mm -hmm. And and certainly the numbers show. And and that's very much how we see that even just in our own country and in its own, in our history, you know, as young as our country is, that back then, especially of the Wild West, I mean, you had hangings and things like that. And that was the means of it. I mean, it was a, it was almost like a, I don't, I I don't want to sound, um, you know, morbid here, but it, it was like a parade <laughs> in a sense. Yep. It, it was a community fair of sorts when somebody got hung. You know, everybody from the community came out to witness. Parents, children, everybody. You came to where the gala was and you saw this take place. And it was used, just for what you were saying, as a deterrent mm-hmm. from committing crimes because they were so it was just happening so frequently they had to go to that level to help begin to sway some of that stuff so we have that and now you know once again all this started with the casting of lots Mm -hmm. so who was in charge of which straw piece of straw was picked out Mm -hmm. I believe it was God Mm -hmm. instead of doing it on the second month the third day of the year. No, this is the 12th month, the 13th day of this year. You know, so you've got this year-long thing mm-hmm. to prepare for and to get this. Uh, and now they have this, this festival of Purim in verse 26 that, you know, they are still celebrating today by, you know, mm-hmm. um, in Israel. And, and it says that for all the words this letter and of that which they had seen concerning this matter in which had come unto them. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined them unto them. So all such that joined them, that's even those who at one time were their enemy mm-hmm. now have joined them. Because yep. we see in here that a lot of them had turned and mm-hmm. became Jews yep. for fear of their life. You know, so they had done that. So it was a deterrent. As, as I see it, it was a tremendous deterrent mm-hmm. for those who said, wait a minute, my life is worth more than this. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not going to allow my hatred to, to do me in. You know, and mm-hmm. it has for so many people. So you have that. So they ordain that. And I find it interesting that Shushan now goes and has an extra day. Mm-hmm. Instead of just the 13th day, it would be the 13th and 14th day of the 12th month that they had to defend themselves. There were some who hung back Mm -hmm. and decided they were going to attack the Jews on the 14th day, Mm -hmm. but only in Shushan. Mm -hmm. You know, the other 126 provinces, they were celebrating on the 14th day. Mm -hmm. But in Shushan, they couldn't celebrate until the 15th day. Mm -hmm. Now, some of it may have been because of the hanging of Haman and his sons, mm-hmm. which 
fuel the crowd. I don't know if that's true mm -hmm. or not. Well, I would think that would be because if you're going back all the way back to verses, uh, verse 13 is where this whole thing happens. So Esther said, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow yep. according to today's decree and let Haman's sons, be, 10 sons be hung on the gallows. That word and tying it to this um, decree, right? right. And, and so that leads me to think that it's because of this, there's going to be some people that are probably going to want to try to rise up, yep. you know, in the midst of that moment. So allow us to continue because it's going to, there might be a chapter two to the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and we know that there were. Yeah. That there was another 300, I think, that mm -hmm. rose up and they were killed. So you have all of that. Now they have declared a, a day of feasting. Mm -hmm. For the rest of the province, it was declared for the 14th day. Shushan, it was declared for the 15th day. Mm -hmm. But today they are still celebrating it. And, you know, I, I find it so interesting that, you know, we, it seems like in our country we're getting rid of all these holidays. Yeah. Why? Because we don't want to remember. Mm -hmm. Yet the Jews say, wait a minute, we need to remember mm -hmm. our past. Yep. We need to remember our history. Yeah, and it's not, and that's it. it. It's not just about the holidays. Yeah, it's the history, and we see so much, especially here in America right now, where they're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to take certain things out of, right. out of our history books, or or tear down this statue or that statue to try to pretend that these things were not part of our history. No, we need to remember those things. We they needed to remember. You know, not just the Jews, but especially those that, I said, were of the other number that became Jews. They needed to be constantly reminded, look, this, this was your past. Yeah, this is what, what happened. Because by remembering where your past is will keep you from repeating it in the future. So to wrap this all up, because we just got the sign, to wrap this all up, who was the initial victim? The initial victim was Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Okay? He was the initial victim. And then when he let it be known that he was Jew, then all the Jews became the victims. Now we're finding that Mordecai is the conqueror, mm -hmm. and all the Jews were conquerors. And we find this in chapter 10, and I'm just going to read verse 2. And all the acts of his power and his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings and the Medes and the Persians? today mm -hmm. and by golly it is yeah so he went from victim to conqueror why because he followed what god said mm -hmm. you can go from being a victim today to being a conqueror if we follow what god says in his word through jesus christ our lord mm -hmm. i hope you've enjoyed this study of the book of esther next week we start a brand new study it's of the gospel of john and we're going to be talking basically centering around the transforming power of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Mm. I'm Pastor Harold Noyce, pastor of the Community Christian Church. We have morning worship at 9.30 every Sunday morning. We have evening worship every Sunday night at 6 p.m. We also have Tuesday night Bible study. We have Wednesday night prayer meeting. If you're in our area, please stop in. Say hi to us. Worship with us. And just let us get to know you. And if you're in the Charlestown, New Hampshire area, we invite you to come down and join us at Life on Main. We meet at the Charlestown Senior Center at 223 Old Springfield Road every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, gathering for a great time of worship, great time in the Word together. We also have cottage prayer meetings that take place at our house, a.k.a. the Abundant Life Center at 276 Main Street, 630 every Wednesday night. Open to people um, of any, you know, Bible-believing church, feel free to come on out as we seek God on behalf of our community. And uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. We want to thank those here at FACT TV for making this show possible and for all their hard work and due diligence to make us look and sound halfway decent. <laughs> and uh, But also, if you are not able to tune into those broadcasts um, in the southeastern east, quadrant of Vermont and the southwestern quadrant of New Hampshire, then you can also find us on our uh, social media pages. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube, as well as on Truth and on Rumble. We are also being carried on most popular podcast providers as well. So we want to thank you so much for tuning in to Hotline Ministry. <laughs>